back with you. I've had a question about how to calculate the twist in tapered shafts, and I thought that would make a pretty good video. So here we go. What we've got here is a section of a tapered shaft, and I've got it set it's a meter long, 30 millimeters in diameter on one end, and 50 millimeters in diameter on the other end. Now, I know this isn't the scale, but you get the idea here. Little, big, straight shaft, there you go. And we're trying to calculate the twist in this shaft. Well, normally, there's, a, there's a, uh, an equation in Strength of Materials books that talks about or describes how to calculate twist in a uh, uniform shaft. Well, this isn't uniform, so what do we do? Turns out it's actually not that hard. I'm going to have to do a little calculus, though. I'm going to drop a C-bomb on you. So let's, let's uh, get all the, the details out of the way here. We're going to assume a torque of 500 Newton meters. So that's, what is that going to be? Uh, counterclockwise on that end and clockwise on that end if you're looking that direction. 30 millimeters on one end, 50 millimeters on the other end are the diameters and the length of a meter. And I'm going to assume it's made out of aluminum. So there's the shear modulus of aluminum. Okay, so we got all the details out of the way here. So we're given all this stuff. Okay. Given all that, find theta, which means the twist between one end and the other. Well, I'll write, write out the solution here. All right. And the expression most of us have seen, or if you haven't seen this, go check your Strengths of Materials book, and it'll tell you this. It's theta equals TL over JG, okay? Now, this is for a uniform shaft, okay? That, that we don't have a uniform shaft, but uniform shaft, okay? So it's constant cross-section. It's the same diameter from one end to the other. We don't have one of these, but we can start with this, and we can get the right answer from that. Okay, just to make sure we know what everything is here. T is the torsion, or the torque, I should say. L is the length, which we've got there. J is the polar moment of inertia. And so I guess I'll, I should write that in here. Polar moment of inertia. Now, if I was king of the world, I wouldn't call it that, but too late. Okay, and that's shear modulus. Now, polar moment of inertia has to do with geometry, and that has to do with the material. So when you're looking at the stiffness of a structure, stiffness comes from two different places. One is the, is the geometry of the structure, and the other one's what it's made out of. Well, that's stiffness due to geometry, or to cross-sectional area, I guess it would be more specific, cross-sectional shape, and that's the stiffness due to the material. So that's stiffness due to cross-section, stiffness due to material. There's your two parts. Okay, well the problem is this is for a uniform shaft. We don't have a uniform shaft. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to erase a little bit of this, and I'm going to show you how we're going to sneak up on the answer here. All right, I have an expression for a uniform shaft. Well, what can I do with that? What if I were to take this shaft and divide it up into little sections? Okay, and each of the sections was uniform. So I had little section, little section, little section, little section. So I would, I would get from small to large in stepped sections. So I can say delta theta equals T. Well, hang on. I'm going to leave that alone for right now. J, G, delta L. Okay? So the change in twist over a little segment is that stuff multiplied by the change in length. And if you're, if you're paying attention, you know where I'm headed here. There's no question. Those are eventually going to be Ds. This is eventually, there's going to be an integral here somewhere. So let's do that. Uh, let's, let's, let's clean up a few details and let's just do that. All right, now one thing I decided here was the x direction goes that way. And I'm going to make this delta x. Not because it has to be. I could leave a delta L if, I, if you want, but I think it's going to be a little less confusing if I make that an X, and we do everything in terms of X. So I'm going to need some room over here, so I'm going to erase some space on my little board and go from here on up. Well, what if those deltas, which are just little sections of a finite length that I've defined, maybe these are, I don't know, 10 millimeters, okay, so there's, what, 100 of them going down there. Well, Let's make them smaller than that, and smaller and smaller and smaller, and add them all up. Well, integration is really just expensive adding, so let's just do that. And I'm going to say that d theta equals t over j g d x. Okay, so that's that's okay. That's that's now the, uh, the the deltas have been replaced with these dx and d theta, which means it's a tiny, tiny, tiny length infinitesimally small. Here it would have had an actual finite length. Here it's infinitesimal. But the idea is kind of the same. There's only one problem with this right now, and that's J, because J is going to change down the uh, uh, 
length of the shaft here, so it's really j of x times g. If I, if I could figure out j of x, I'd be in business. So let's do that. Well, j is for a circular shaft is pi over 32 d to the fourth power. There we go. Is d to the fourth. Well, d keeps changing. You know? All right, let's do that. Let's figure out how that's going to work. Well, d of x is going to be d0, which is this end, plus some slope, whatever that is, times x. All right? Because this is a straight line taper from one end to the other. Well, this the slope is just that diameter minus that diameter divided by the length. Okay? So it's going to be d0 plus d1 minus d0 over L times x. That's all it is. All right? That's so easy a professor could do it. Now if we want to plug some numbers in here. Now remember, these are going to all have to be in meters since that length is in meters. And I just noticed when I stick my head over there, I get this light that's from just outside the frame. So I'll try to quit doing that. Um, so 0 0.30 plus, okay, now, 50 minus 30, going to be 20, divided by 1. So this is really useful, really uh, convenient. Okay, there's dx, right? D is a function of x, right? Now I'm in business. Now I need some more room here. So I'm going to go over here now and uh, just keep going. And keep all that. All right. Last thing we need to know here, if j of x is pi over 32 d sub x to the fourth, so that's going to be pi over 32 times that stuff over there. 0 plus 0 0.020x to the fourth. All right. All the pieces are, are in place now. We've got everything we need to know. So I'm going to say that d theta is t over g. Well, t doesn't change and g doesn't change. t is constant. The torque is constant across the sh uh, shaft from one end to the other. And g is just a material property. That doesn't change. Okay, times 1 over j of x. Well, all right. And then I'm going to put d theta here, or dx here. All right, j of x, we already have that here. So I'm going to put that in the denominator, and I'm going to write 32 over pi times 1 over, let's see, 0 0.030 plus 0 0.020x to the fourth. And let's see, I'm going to run out of room here again, so let's clean this up. dx, well, how do you make a derivative go away? This is this is, tells me what's going on in every little infinitesimal slice of that uh, tapered shaft. Well, if I want to add up the effect along the shaft of all those little infinitesimal slices, I'm just going to integrate. Remember, integration is just expensive adding. All right, so I'm going to go from, well, actually, I can pull those two out since they're constant. T, G. Okay, remember, T is 500 and G is 26 times 10 to the ninth. It's a really big number. Makes you think this isn't this the, the theta is not going to be especially large, and it isn't. Okay, so from zero to L, which is going to be one, and I can write 32 over pi there as well, and go 0 0.030 plus 0 0.020x. Oh, isn't this fun? There we go. Dx. Okay. Now, that's something that you can uh, maybe do by hand if you're really feeling adventurous. You can run this through your uh, programmable calculator. Your graphing calculator can do this. I did it in MathCAD, but you can use Mathematica, MathCAD, MATLAB, whatever your favorite number grinding package is. And when you work this out, you get, let's see, make sure I do this right, that turns out to be 0 0.095. Well, 0 0.095 what? Well, it's 0 0.095 radians. Okay, that's the natural unit that comes out of this. All right, and that turns out to be, make sure I do this right, about 5.44 degrees. So I've got 5.443, but that's close enough. Now, before we stop, I'm pretty sure that's the right answer. Before we stop, it would be nice to know, to do some kind of sanity check on this. I always tell my students to give their problems, to subject their problems to the sniff test. You know, give it a sniff. Could this be the right answer? Well, let's see. What if, you know, we do know the expression for a uniform, untapered shaft. Well, what happens if we just do this, TL over JG if D equals 0 0.030 meters? Okay. Well, that would be the, t the twist in the shaft 
if it was 30 millimeters in diameter down the whole length of the shaft. And let's also do this. J, G, if D equals 0 0.050 meters. Well, that's going to give me the twist for a shaft with a uniform diameter of 50 millimeters. And that probably, well, not probably, definitely needs to be smaller than the answer I got. And that definitely needs to be bigger than the answer I got because this shaft is going to be more flexible all down its length than the one I analyzed, and that one's going to be more rigid than the one I analyzed all down its length. Okay. Well, I happen to grind those two numbers out, and this is them in radians, 0 0.242, I'll just put the radian there, and 0 0.031 radians. All right, well, I think we passed the sniff test. That is indeed lower twist, more higher stiffness than the, than the tapered shaft that I got, and that is indeed more flexible, higher twist than the, the answer I got. So that gives me confidence in this right here. I think I got that right. Alrighty, I hope this helps, and I'll talk to you next time.